This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 1931. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. We would like to thank our community partners, Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma, and social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com.
It's a gorgeous night here in Sonoma. The Stompers in the Stockade getting ready to take off here on this Wednesday night. Welcome in, everybody. You're listening to Stompers Baseball at MIXLR.com slash Sonoma Stompers and watching on Sonoma TV at KSVY. Nick Barnes against Neil Lang here tonight. Barnes, the right-hander from Simi Valley, California. He'll take on the Salina Stockade that are 8-20 to open this year, 12 and a half games back. The Stompers have a three and a half game lead after the win over San Rafael last night, a final of eight to four. Joseph Broderick, one and oh, seven innings last night, seven strikeouts for the Stompers who come in at 20 and seven, 13 and three here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. And here is a lineup that Nick Barnes will face tonight, put together by player manager Chuck Rocker leading off in right field. It'll be Justin Bird. Cody Bishop hits second and he's in left. Luis Martini, the shortstop, will bat third, followed by the designated hitter, Jacob Wohler. Zane Gelfman will bat fifth over at third base, followed by the first baseman, Taylor Zuhortz. He hits sixth. Chuck Rocker will bat seventh in center field, followed by Eric Kozak, the catcher, hitting eighth. And Aaron Sheeks will bat round out the lineup, batting ninth against Nick Barnes, who's made one start against Salina this year. He is 1-0. Allowed one run on just... Two hits the last time he faced this club. 3-0 and on the year for Nick Barnes. This will be a sixth start at 2.96 ERA. He'll face the left-handed Justin Bird to start things off. Once again, we welcome you on KSVY here in Sonoma on the Stoppers YouTube channel and right here on the Stoppers Radio Network. And we're underway as Nick Barnes delivers a fastball in the outside corner for strike one to Justin Bird. First pitch at 6.06, 79 degrees here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. And for Nick Barnes, the right-hander out of Simi Valley, 6'3", 215 pounds, his 0-1 to Bird is fouled out of play off to the left. Barnes fastball, curveball, changeup, fastball, low 90s. The good curveball and then the changeup to follow it up. The last start for Barnes came in Vallejo on what was a marathon game. The Stompers won that ball game 15 to 10. Barnes lasted five and a third. Here he is on 0-2 to Bird, and that's on the outside corner. Barnes, a three-pitch strikeout to Justin Bird to open the ball game. The looking variety, and there's one away. Barnes starts his night off with a hot start. Only four strikeouts in his last start in Vallejo, five and a third. He allowed seven runs, five earns on eight hits, four strikeouts and two walks in those five and a third innings. That was the last start for Barnes. That came on the road. That was last week on the 3rd of July. Here's his first pitch to Cody Bishop. A fastball misses away. First ball that Barnes has thrown tonight. Now, Cody Bishop with five home runs this year. Two of them came the last time these two teams matched up on the 4th of July. Barnes is 1-0. It has popped up left side. Nick Gata over toward the side ball, and it will get out of play. One ball and one strike the count defensively behind Barney's tonight for the Stompers. It'll be DeAngelis in left, Hubbard in center, and Williams in right. Gata at third, Barrios at short, Romero at second, Barfield at first with Daniel Molinari behind the plate tonight defensively for your Stompers. Nobody on, one out here in the top of the first. No score and already off to a better start than they were yesterday. A solo home run on the first pitch of the game. For Raul Navarro against Joseph Roderick, who then settled in and retired eight in a row at the beginning of that game. Here's Barnes on one and one, and he misses badly inside to Cody Bishop. Two balls and a strike. You know, that pitch there in the Atlantic League, you'd be able to go to first base. Saw an article today that read the Atlantic League is trying out stealing first base which got all of us intrigued in the office this afternoon. The 2-1 has popped out of play. The rule in baseball is if you you can, you can run on a drop third strike, right? Well, the Atlantic League is implementing running on any ball that is not caught in the air, in any count. Now, we know the Atlantic League has experienced moving the pitcher's mound back. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Cody Bishop. He lines it into left field right at Rob DeAngelis, now racing back, and he makes the catch. Of course, all the new rules implemented in Major League Baseball, the, the pitch clock, the in-between inning clock, the mound visits, keeping one foot in the box, all that to try and speed up the game. They're trying to 
increased offense with moving the pitcher's mound back. They're doing it in the Atlantic League already, and now they're experimenting with stealing first base, which those who are purists around the game of baseball, they're going to be shaking a stick at that. Two out, Lewis Martini, the shortstop, will come up against Nick Barnese. Here's the first pitch. Inside with a fastball for ball one. It was crazy this, this morning when we were discussing the stealing first base in the Stompers front office. The 1-0 pitch to Martini is high for ball two. Hey, you guys believe that you can now steal first base in the Atlantic League? There's no date. It did not read when it would actually be implemented, if it would happen this year or not, as the 2 row is on the outside corner for a strike, or if it would be next year or the following year. It's just odd to think about. I think odd is a very mild term for it. The 2-1 is swung on and missed. Odds on one end of the spectrum, Asinine would be on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> Two and two to Lewis Martini. Nobody on two out top of the first no score. Here's the pitch. Fastball from Barney's inside. It got a piece of Lewis Martini at 96 miles an hour. So Barney's out of the gate, throwing hard tonight. It clips Martini. He goes to first, and the first base runner allowed by Nick Barney. So here's Jacob Wooler, the designated hitter. Batting cleanup once again tonight. He does not have a home run batting at 284. He has driven in 12. First pitch from Barnese, a fastball lined, fouled on the third baseline. And it's 0-1. Barnese, a 30-year-old, drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays in the third round of the 2007 draft out of Simi Valley High School, the 95th overall pick. He peeks over the shoulder to first where Martini leads off. Here's his 0-1, and Wooler fights another fastball away. Velocity was a talking point in last night's game, especially out of the bullpen with Lorita coming out throwing 89 to 91. And then, of course, Connor Leadholm was the big talk, 94 to 96 last night. A lot of big guns out of the stomper bullpen. Barnice way ahead, the 0 2. A curveball fouled off. Wooler stays alive, and the count remains nothing and two. Shadows on the left side of the infield covering Gata, and the grass on the left side reaching the, the knees of Barnice. His upper body is in the sunshine. Ball will travel in and out of the shadows all the way to home plate. Here's his 0-2, and he chases a fastball. Mid-90s for Nick Barnice once again, and his second strikeout of the ball game ends the top of the first. He strands a man after hitting Martini. We go to the home half of the inning. Got a Williams, DeAngelis, and the rest of the stomper lineup when we come back. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. Today, here's the starting lineup presented by Stopper Manager Zach Pace and presented by Sotheby's International Realty. Nick Gatton will lead things off at third base, followed by Miles Williams and Wright. 
Rob DeAngelis bats third in left field, and the cleanup man is the center fielder, Dondre Hubbard. Brent Gillespie, the DH, will hit fifth. Jacob Barfield over at first base. He will hit sixth with the catcher, Daniel Molinari, batting seventh. Pedro Barrios will bat eighth at shortstop, and Racer Romero rounds out the lineup at second base against left-hander Neil Lang in his third start with the stockade. The left-hander from Concordia University, Irline, Irvine, deals high to Nick Gata, one ball and no strikes. Lang with a 7.10 ERA. His 1-0 pitch to Gata is on the inside corner for strike one. High ERA. The strikeout and walk numbers are low. He's allowed 13 hits in 12 and two-thirds. His 1-1 one, one to Gata here catches the outside. Maybe not. 2-1. and one. But his last start against the Stompers, three and a third perfect. Six innings, two runs, four hits, five strikeouts, and he got the win. That was on 4th of July, the 7-4 final. And 2-1 pitch to Gata, misses, and it's 3-1. Three three. Nick Gata leads the league with 35 walks. Here's the 3-1 pitch, and he walked him. What do you know? 36 walks for Nick Gata, and he's on base to open the home half of the first for the Stompers. So 10 runs, all of them earned in 12 and two-thirds for Lang this stint with Salina. And with that walk, Nick Gata has now reached in 26 straight games. Miles Williams takes strike one. Miles Williams, six, 263, with four home runs and 17 runs batted in. He hit his fourth home run of the season last night over the press box in left center. His first here at home, and Lang delivers an 0-1 changeup in for strike two, and Williams is in a hole, nothing in two, and something that Stomper fans are tired of hearing this year. Miles Williams, who was so great last year, off to a slow start through the month of June and into the beginning of July, the 0-2. He pops it straight back and out of play. Hit 300 with 20 home runs. Seemed like he had an extra base hit about every other night in 2018. So far for Miles this year, the four home runs, a triple and two doubles. So just... Seven extra base hits in 28 games this year. The 0-2 is chopped on the ground up the middle. Martini Fields feeds the second for one. Back to first. Picked out by Zutenhorst. A double play. 6-4-3. Twin killing. Wipes Gata and Williams off the bases. So two out. Nobody on for Rob DeAngelis. DeAngelis will have to re-spark this home half of the first. Laying the two-seamer, slider, curveball, and a changeup. And you'll see the slider a lot to left-handed hitters. The curveball and a changeup to right-handed hitters. DeAngelis at 297, the lefty against the left-handed Neil Lang. Here's his first pitch. Slider inside, one ball and no strikes. They could not figure out the puzzle that was Neil Lang last time on 4th of July. The Stompers just relieved that they had a base runner the first time up against Lang here tonight, the 1-0. DeAngelis pulls it down the right field line, well foul. The count evens at a ball and a strike. Lang retired the first 10 straight he faced last time out against the Stompers. Defensively behind him tonight, Bishop Brocker Bird in the outfield left to right. The 1-1 to DeAngelis. Swung on and missed in the dirt, 1-2. Gelfman, Martini, Sheiks, Zutenhorst around the infield. Eric Kozak does the catching for player manager Chuck Rocker, who's in center field. One and two, the count on Rob DeAngelis, the man from Staten Island, New York. Here's the pitch, and he takes a changeup inside. It's two and two. Napa hosts San Rafael tonight. Over at Minor Family Field, the 2-2 pitch. DeAngelis chops the curveball slowly up the first baseline, rolling on the chalk, and now it sneaks foul. 
So the count remains 2-2. Two and two. The Stompers broke San Rafael's five-game win streak last night. So the longest win streak in the league this season. The Stompers still possessed a nine-game win streak earlier on. Then they had a separate six-game win streak. San Rafael's offense back in order tonight in the bottom of the fourth inning in Napa. They lead the Silverados 3-1. Vallejo with an off night tonight. They'll host the Stompers tomorrow night at 6.35 and then again on Friday night at 6.35 out at Wilson Park. So two in a row in Vallejo, almost a little mini series. There's the 2-2 pitch. DeAngelis takes high. They appeal down to first and he did not go around. Count is full on Rob DeAngelis with Dondre Hubbard on deck. DeAngelo's just a few ticks under 300 with the average this year. Here's the payoff from Neil Lang. And he rolls the fastball on the ground to first. Newton Horse fields on two hops. He'll run over to the bag in a 1-2-3 first inning. For Neil Lang, we go to the top of the second. Gelfman, Newton Horse, Rocker coming up for still line right here on the Stompers Radio Network and on KSVY. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes, and if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Five, six, seven hitters for Salina here in the top of the second. No score. Gelfman will lead it off against Nick Barnice. Right-hander allowed just a hit-by-pitch in the first inning, and he got a pair of strikeouts. Here's his first pitch to the right-handed hitting Gelfman in a fastball. Misses outside for ball one. 17 pitches for Barnice in that first inning. Notching a pair of strikeouts. So it's Gelfman, Zoot, and Horst Rocker for Salina here in the second. Barnice on 1-0, and and the fastball is lined softly into right field. That'll fall for a base hit. Lead-off single for Zane Gelfman here in the second. First hit allowed by Barnice tonight. Here's Taylor Zootenhorst. Zootenhorst, who came over from San Rafael earlier on in the season. 267 average. Barney works from the stretch for the second time tonight. He looks over the shoulder at Gelfman at first. Now set. Here's the first pitch to Zutenhorst. A fastball. Misses outside. One ball and no strikes. Daniel Molinari behind the plate calling the pitches for Nick Barney's tonight. Infield playing for a double play ball. Here's the 1-0. Fastball on the ground to Barrios at short. He'll field on two hops, slip to second for one. Romero back to first, 6-4-3. And two outs on one pitch for Nick Barnice. The bases are empty. Neil Lang got a double play in the bottom of the first inning to help escape the leadoff walk. And Barnice gets one here in the second. 
to erase a leadoff single, and that'll bring up Chuck Rocker. Rocker hitting 256, no home runs. He has driven in six. Barney's out of the wind of his first pitch to Rocker, a fastball at 94, misses a couple inches off the inside corner, and it's 1 0. Barney's looking for a 1 2 3 inning here in the second, his 1 0 pitch. Rocker sprays foul off to the right. One ball and one strike on Chuck Rocker. The leadoff single by Gelfman, and then Zutenhorst bounces into the 6-4-3 double play to wipe both men off the bases. Still no score here in the top of the second, the 1-1 from Barnes. Rocker squares around and takes a breaking ball in the dirt. Second curveball of the night from Barnes. It skipped in for ball two. Stompers at 20 and seven, three and a half games over San Rafael. There's the two one pitch. Rocker squares around again and takes a fastball at 93 for strike two. Pacifics currently lead the Silverados over in Napa. Six to one in the top of the fifth. Here's the two two and Rocker takes inside. The count is full on Chuck Rocker with the catcher, Eric Kozak, on deck. Here's the payoff pitch. Rocker chops it on the ground to short. Barrios cannot field the two-hopper. Errors have plagued the Stompers this year. Barrios... On a three-hop ground ball, tries to field it off to the side. It was a little too far out of his reach. It hits the glove. Rocker is aboard for Eric Kozak. Kozak, four home runs on the season, two of them here. The first pitch from Barnice on the outside corner at 95. Nothing in one to count on Kozak. Rocker leads from first after the air. Still no score in the top of the second. Barnice on nothing and one. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. You go from a fastball at 95 on the corner to a curveball at 79. And the count is 0-2. Hubbard shading toward right center, taking the blue pit away from Kozak. Barnice way ahead, nothing and two. Here's the pitch. Fastball threw it right by him at 93. Third strike out of the ball game. For Nick Barnes, we go to the home half of the second. No score. Middle third of the order coming up for the Stompers. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And Social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level.
Bottom of the second inning, no score. Dondre Hubbard, Brent Gillespie, and Jacob Barfield against Neil Lang here in the second. Stopper's gotten a base runner in the first on the Nick Gano leadoff walk, and he was erased on a 6-4-3 double play. So Dondre Hubbard hitting at 364. Well, come up to bat against Neil Lang to lead off the bottom of the second. Stompers without a hit against Neil Lang in the first. He needed only 16 pitches. Seven of those 16 came on the Rob DeAngelis ground out. So here's Hubbard. Slugging center fielder, 10 home runs, 39 runs batted in, and Neil Lang's first pitch. Is a slider on the outside corner for strike one. Dondre Hubbard, he was hit left-handed pitching very well this year. He's hit all pitching very well this year. Of course, the 364 average shows that. Here's the 0-1. Stays high and away, a ball and a strike. He's a guy that you don't want to fall behind in the count to, so Neil Lang smartly dropped in a breaking ball first pitch. It's just not a good count to throw any pitch to this guy. We'll see what he comes with on one and one. He kicks and deals. Stay at high, two and one. Look like a changeup out of the hand of Neil Lang. Two balls in a strike. Now that you've fallen behind Hubbard, what do you do? I wish I had an answer. We'll see what Neil Lang does on the two one. He drops in a curveball, and Hubbard tanks for strike two. Now, did Dondre really think he was going to get a fastball in that 2-1 count? The league knows the reputation that Hubbard has. We'll see what the 2-2 pitch brings. He may go back to that breaking ball. He's gotten two called strikes on it so far in the at-bat. And Hubbard hits a fastball in the air to center. That's it. Well, Rocker going back, still in the run. He is backpedaling, and he makes the catch. 415 feet away from home plate. Dondre Hubbard flies out, and he's out number one. This is a big ballpark here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field, 435 to straightaway center. And Hubbard gave it a ride, and I can guarantee you that's a home run in pretty much every major league stadium except for Miami, Kansas City, maybe Detroit. Other than that, it's a home run in about every other ballpark. One out, nobody on for Brent Gillespie, the designated hitter, and Lang throws a fastball by him for strike one. Gillespie had 342, three home runs, eight driven in. Lang's nothing in one pitch, and Gillespie waves at a fastball again. Lefties are a tough matchup for Brent Gillespie so far this year. He's in a hole, nothing in two. Lang could throw him virtually anything here. Kozak sets up the 0-2. They elevate. Gillespie tanks. One ball and two strikes. Nobody on, one out. Bottom of the second, no score. Lang on one and two. Gillespie tanks outside. Two balls and two strikes. We had a two-hour and 57-minute game last night to open the week. That means we're going to end the week with not that. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Gillespie fouls a fastball straight back. Neil last year. Split his time between the Pecos League and the Pacific Association with the Monterey Amber Jacks, the San Rafael Pacifics, and the Napa Silverados. Already with his second team in the Pacific Association this year, and his 2-2 curveball is swung on and missed, and Neil Lang gets Brent Gillespie to strike out for the first strikeout of the ball game. Two out, nobody on, and Jacob Barfield, who celebrated his baseball card night last night. He'll come up with the bases empty. 250 average for Barfield. It doesn't really tell the story for how productive he's been this year. Six home runs, 18 RBIs. And for Jacob Barfield, six doubles, so 12 extra base hits. Out of his 21 total hits this year. 
Here's the first pitch to him from Neil Lang. Breaking ball is outside for ball one. This is another guy that if you're a left-handed pitcher on the mound, you may not get away with that get me over curveball, especially behind the count here, 1-0 the pitch. Barfield takes a changeup outside, two balls and no strikes. Some pitchers will start pitching backwards, meaning throwing breaking balls and fastball counts and vice versa. This is one of those situations with Barfield at the plate. Here's the 2-0. Breaking ball in first strike one. Barfield took the curveball. Surprised these guys aren't sitting on pitches like that in hitters counts. Such is such a great fastball hitting team. The 2-1. Breaking ball, he was looking for it there and swung over the top of it, it's two and two. Of course, when you're a professional baseball player, you can hit the fastball. The two-two pitch from Lang. Change up in the dirt. The count is full with Daniel Molinari on deck. Getting the start behind the plate tonight. Three and two to Barfield. Here's the payoff pitch from Lang. Breaking ball in Barfield. Turns around, says he got a piece to Gary Reichelmeyer. Reichelmeyer says you did not. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Neil Lang, and that ends the second. Six up, six down, just one walk for Neil Lang. We're through two. It's scoreless here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Aaron Sheeks will lead it off for Salina. 9-1-2 coming up. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State of the art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community oriented and family owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Aaron Sheeks leads it off for Salina here in the top of the third. We are scoreless. Nick Barnice on 30 pitches. He'll face the 9-1-2 spots in the order. Here's the first pitch to Sheeks, and that is outside for ball one. So Barnice, three strikeouts so far in the first two innings. He's hit a man, allowed just one hit, the single by Zane Gelfman, and one error on defense for the Stompers tonight. Here's the 1-0, and Sheeks tanks outside and low. 102, huh, Joseph? Radar gun read 102. <laughs> I'm not saying Nick Barnes doesn't throw 102, but that pitch was not 102. Here's the 2 0 pitch. It's chopped softly back to the mound. Barnes will field underhand flip to first, and that's how the third inning gets started. One out, top, back to the top of the lineup for Justin Bird. 
Bird was called out on strikes to open the game. Barnes threw him three fastballs, and Bird took the last one for strike three. Barnes has been throwing hard tonight, about 93 to 95. He's 96 and apparently 102. I promise that uh, that was a misreading. We'd love if Barnes threw 102. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? I'm sure if Barnes threw 102 miles an hour, he'd be called up mid-game. Here's the first pitch to Justin Bird. Breaking ball misses inside for ball one. Imagine they just airlift him out of here. Send a helicopter. The Mets would call and say, hey, we're sending our team plane. We're going to land it in the outfield and uh, throw bo tell Barnes to hop on, and he's going to start tomorrow. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Bird. He hits it in the air to left. That's hit well. DeAngelis going back. He's on the run, and it is gone. Justin Bird goes the other way for his fourth home run of the season. And just like that, Salina leads 1-0 on a solo shot the other way by Justin Bird. That's the third lefty in the last two times that these teams have played that has hit a home run the other way here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. One out. Nobody on after the home run by Bird. Here's Cody Bishop. He hit two balls the opposite way out of here the last time these two teams played. And Barnes, his first pitch, starts him with a curveball that misses outside and low. Same thing last night. San Rafael went up 1-0 on a solo home run, and the Stompers came back with seven runs. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and Bishop fouls it straight back to the screen. Bishop flied to DeAngelis in left his first time up. Hubbard's playing him to go that way in a lot of room in center and right center. Williams about 90 feet off the line in right, but still a lot of grass out there. And the 1-1 pitch is hit on the line into left. DeAngelis comes on. He slides, and he can't make the catch. Bishop will stay at first base. A single to left, and the Salina stockade of a runner at first with one out for Luis Martini. The solo home run and then the single for Cody Bishop. Martini was hit by a pitch his first time. Zach Pace has Dondre Hubbard running all over the place in center field. He likes the center fielder to take away the blue pit to the opposite field gap. The first pitch to Martini, he takes a fastball low. Pace's theory behind that is it really frustrates our pitchers when they when the opposing hitters hit a little bloop in the other the opposite field gap. Barnes is 1-0. Fastball swung on and missed. Some managers would say play in the pull side gap because if they're a pull hitter, they're likely going to hit that way. And Pace is thinking behind it is if they're going to hit in the pull side gap and they're going to hit it well, they're going to hit it over your head anyway. That's why he has Dondre Hubbard playing in the opposite field gap. Martini can't hold back the swing on a curveball in the dirt. And it's 1-2. Interesting way of thinking about it. He says if you're going to pull a ball to the pull side gap, at least nine times out of ten, they're going to hit it over your head. So we're going to keep our pitchers happy and take away that little bloop the other way. Because nothing frustrates a pitcher more than really getting in on somebody and having them just muscle it over the head of the infielders and have it fall for a base hit. Here's the one-two pitch, and Martini takes high. Two balls and two strikes the count. So the home run and the single... As Barney's a little sporadic here in the third. He looks to first, now set. The 2-2. There goes the runner. The pitch is outside. Called strike three. The throw down to second base. Hits off of the glove of Romero and shoots into right center field. Bishop stays at second with a stolen base. Martini is called out on strikes. That's the fourth strikeout of the game for Nick Barney's. Cody Bishop went head first into second base, and now time is called, giving him a chance to brush off and get the air back in his lungs, and Jacob Wooler digs in. So a man in scoring position for Solana now in the third, and Barney's trying to end the threat. His first pitch to Wooler, fastball in the outside corner for strike one.
Man, Barnice has now hit 102 twice. <laughs> Extra velo tonight. Here's the 0-1. That fastball is hit out of play off to the left. That one came in at 96. That's a little more like it. Oh and two the count on Wooler, who's 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Bishop leads from second, two out. One nothing stockade here in the third. Barnese shakes Molinari once, now twice. Now they agree. Right hander looks to second and throws on 0 and 2. And the curveball in the dirt is chased. Molinari blocks it. He'll throw down to first, and that is over the head of Jacob Barfield. Romero is there to back it up. Molinari wipes the right hand on the pant leg. As if to say that it slipped out of his hand. A strikeout and an error on Molinari. So that'll go down as the fifth strikeout of the game for Nick Barnes. Reaching on the air is Wooler, and that extends the inning for Zane Gelfman. Salina with a record of 8 and 20, but any team. Even the Salina Stock 8, if you give them extra outs, boy, will they make you pay. So Barnice now trying to get out of this third inning after the air by Molinari. Runners at the corners and two out. one nothing Stock 8. Barnice's first pitch to Gelfman is a fastball swung on and missed. Bishop at third, Wooler at first. Stompers trail one nothing. Barnice on Owen one. Breaking ball, swung on and miss. Great curveball that time from Barnice. It started over the middle half of the plate and just dove away from the bat of Gelfman. Barnice has him right where he wants him now in an old two hole. With two out, the pitch. Fastball high and away. Barnice wanted to go upstairs. He went upstairs, but just not a competitive fastball in 0 2. Easy to see for Gelfman that it was going to be high and away right away. So 1 and 2 the count. Zootenhorst awaits on deck. Wind blowing to center just a little bit. Here's the 1 2. That's popped up. DeAngelis in left, camps under it, and that ends the inning. Salina gets a run on the solo shot by the leadoff man, Justin Bird, there on the board. It's 1-0. Bottom third of the lineup for the Stompers when we come back in the last of the third. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com.
Daniel Molinari leads us off, 7-8-9 for the Stompers here in the bottom of the third. One run for Salina in the top half. They lead 1-0 on the solo home run by Justin Bird the other way. So the Stompers trying to get back on track offensively, and so far through eight innings total against Neil Lang in his last two starts against the Stompers, they have scored just two runs. The only quality starting for Lang this year, that win against the Stompers on the 4th of July. Here's his first pitch to Daniel Molinari. His, he takes high for ball one. So 33 pitches to open the inning for Neil Lang. That was 34. Stompers trail by only one. Here's the 1-0. Molinari takes inside. Called a strike on the corner. It's 1-1. One one. Stompers who have won a pair in a row. And says Stockade. Salina comes into this game having lost three straight in just two out of their last ten. Stompers have won eight out of their last ten. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Molinari. Breaking ball hit on the ground. Left side, Martini backhands it short. The long throw off the back foot is in time. Luis Martini, the slick fielding shortstop, throws out Molinari. One out, here's Barrios. 2.30 for Barrios, but he's been getting on base in a variety of different ways this year, though the 2.30 average well below his league leading average from last year at 3.65. But Barrios had a night. We were talking to general manager Brett Kramer on the air a few nights ago. First pitch to Pedro is taken for ball one. And that night, Brett was talking specifically about the production of Barrios that comes in various ways besides hitting for average. The one that was in the dirt. And on that particular night, Barrios reached all four times. Four different ways. He reached on an error, a hit by pitch, a walk, and a fielder's choice and scored twice. So if that gives you any sort of the idea of how valuable Pedro Barrios is as he laces a two-hopper into the glove of Gelfman at third, who slides and straightens up and throws Barrios out at first. That is a tremendous play by Zane Gelfman over at third, snaring the two-hopper to his left, sliding, getting up, doing a 180, and throwing Barrios out at first, who, by the way, runs pretty well. So here's Rayson Romero. Stompers without a hit. The first eight men that have faced Neil Lang tonight. And here we go again. Rayson Romero, the nine-hole hitter, trying to get the first stomper hit of the night. One man has reached. It was Gata in the first inning to open the game. And then the 6-4-3 double play. So Neil Lang has faced the minimum so far. His first pitch to Romero misses outside and low for ball one. Lang works out of the windup, his 1-0 pinch. A curveball catches the outside corner. Called a strike, and it's 1-1. One one. Lang has been efficient, wildly efficient. In the first three innings, his 1-1, one one, and Romero pops it up. Right around home plate, right in front of home plate, the pitcher, Neil Lang. He caught it. Backpedaling away from home plate toward the pitcher's mound. Kozak, the catcher, could not find it off the bat, and Neil Lang does it himself. So three innings, and Lang has faced the minimum. Zootenhorst, Rocker, and Kozak against Barneys when we come back in the top of the fourth. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And... Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by 
Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Zootenhorst, Rocker, and Kozak, 6-7-8 against Nick Barnese, who has collected five strikeouts so far. The only blemish, the home run to Justin Bird with one out in the third inning. So Barnese's first pinch to open the fourth to Zutenhorst is swung on and missed. Barnese starts the bat with a changeup and it's 0-1. As we check on the scores from around the league over in Napa, the Pacific still lead the Silverado 6-1 there in the bottom of the sixth inning, and Zutenhorst swings at a fastball and comes up empty. It's nothing in two. Three hits against Barnese, two in the third, one in the second. The only free pass, the hit by pitch. Here's his 0-2 to Zutenhorst, and he throws a fastball all the way back to the screen over everybody. And at 94 miles an hour, nobody's going to keep that one from going all the way to the backstop. Shadows on the whole infield here at Sonoma on the infield grass, reaching over to Barfield at first base and Romero at second. Who now shifts up the middle into the bright sunshine. Here's the one-two pitch from Nick Barnese. Fastball strike three at 92 with the knees. And the sixth strikeout for Nick Barnese opens the fourth inning. Taylor Zutenhorst is down on strikes, and here is Chuck Rocker. Rocker bounced to short with two out in the second, and Barrios could not handle it. Rocker also squared around a couple of times during that at bat. So here's the first pitch to him from Barnese. He starts him with a curveball. Rocker bends the back, leans backward, and takes inside 1-0. Stompers with a full bullpen again tonight. Everybody available. Rocker fouls the 1-0 pitch back. It's 1-1. One one. Maybe not Connor Leadholm, who threw an inning last night. But only threw 13 pitches, so he may be available. The 1-1 from Barnes to Rocker, who squares around, bunts it hard up the third baseline and foul. First time we've seen seven men in the stomper bullpen last night. The Stompers have gone with three off the bench this year and six out of the pen. But with Nick Gata going on the IL, the Stompers activated Pat Barnett last night. Here's the one-two pitch to Chuck Rocker. Curveball chops softly over the mound. Barrios charges. He'll field on the grass. The throw on the run is in time. So Rocker grounds to Barrios, who this time throws him out at first for out number two. Talked to Brett Kramer about that today, saying, well, we have seven men in the pen now and just two off the bench. He said, yeah, we implemented that last year to keep the arms a little more fresh. It worked last year. Of course, the Stompers set a Pacific Association record going 57 and 23. Barnese's first pitch to Eric Kozak at the knees for strike one. Nothing in one, the count. We're in the top of the fourth inning. One nothing, Salina. Here's the 0 1 pitch from Barnese to Eric Kozak, a curveball in the dirt. One and one, the count. Barnese looking for his first 1 2 3 inning tonight. Zutenhorst called out on strikes. Rocker grounded to short.
Barnes over the head with the windup. Here's his 1-1, and Kozak fists it on the ground. One hop to Barfield at first. He'll underhand flip to Barnes, and he has a 1-2-3 inning. First one of the night for the right-hander. We go to the home half of the fourth. Salina leads 1-0 coming up for the Stompers. Top of the lineup against Neil Lang. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State of the art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community oriented and family owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Bottom of the fourth inning, one nothing Stompers trail. Top of the lineup against Neil Lang here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Just one runner, one base runner against Neil Lang in the game so far. Nick got a leadoff walk in the bottom of the first. Got will lead us off here in the fourth. Lang a pair of strikeouts. They came back to back in the second to Gillespie and Barfield. Got it, Williams DeAngelis. Trying to put a hit on the board against Lang. First, you got to get a base run, and the Stompers did that. Now they need to get a hit. Then they can worry about coming back from this 1 0 deficit. Here's the first pitch. Got it, takes a curveball for ball one. Got it, who only saw one strike in the at bat to open the ball game. Here's the 1 0. Line drive back up the middle. That'll fall for a base hit. Nick Gata has the first stopper hit of the game, a leadoff single here in the fourth. Here's Miles Williams. Williams bounced into a 6 4 3 double play to wipe the walk off the board in the first inning. Here he is against Lang, his second time through the lineup. Stompers have seen Lang once already tonight. What will they do the second time through the first pitch? Williams hits a fastball in the air to right. That's it well. Bird watches it fly. Miles Williams has gone deep two nights in a row, his fifth of the season, and the Stompers lead it 2-1. to one. Two-run shot to right center field off the bat of Miles Williams. That home run is brought to you by Epicenter. Make your next family adventure an epic one at Epicenter. Here's Rob DeAngelis. Grounded to first against Neil Lang back in the first inning. So the Stompers have seen Lang once through already. Gotta lines a base hit to center, and then Miles Williams' is fifth home run of the year to right center field. 
right over the 345 sign. So here's the first pitch to Rob DeAngelis who squares around and offers at it. Nothing in, one the count to DeAngelis. Rob saw seven pitches his first time before he grounded out to Zutenhorst at first base. Lang's 0-1 delivery. DeAngelis grounder up the middle. Diving is Martini. He can't get it. It's into center field for a base hit. Miles Williams got his the second time up against Neil Lang. Now here comes the man who leads the Pacific Association with 10 home runs, Dondre Hubbard. Hubbard hit a fly ball to deep center field his first time up. Chuck Rocker caught it. Statcast powered by StompersBaseball.com had it at 415 feet. The straightaway center, of course, 435 feet away is that wall in center field. Sub so Hubbard hits it anywhere else in the ballpark. He's got a home run. DeAngelis at first after the single up the middle. Nobody out. Hubbard calls time. Hubbard digs back in against Lang, now out of the stretch. He looks to DeAngelis at first. The first pitch to Hubbard, big swing on a curveball that got the outer half of the plate, and it's nothing in one. So Hubbard definitely trying to match Miles Williams' home run. Not only the one from tonight, but the one from last night that Williams hit over the press box in left center. Who can hit the baseball further between Dondre Hubbard and Miles Williams? Hubbard, a line drive right through the infield. DeAngelis rounds second. He'll stay there. Back-to-back -back singles and four hits in a row for the Stompers. And here comes Brent Gillespie. This at bat for Gillespie will be the first one for the Stompers with men in scoring position tonight. The Miles Williams home run came with Gata at first base. So here's Gillespie. He struck out his first time against Lang. On the season, Brent Gillespie hitting 300, uh, three for 10 with six RBIs with men in scoring position. So still nobody out first and second for the Stompers. They lead it 2-1 in the fourth. Lang's first pitch. Gillespie takes outside, 1-0. DeAngelis is at second. Hubbard is over at first. Back-to-back -back singles. Got to open the inning with a single, and then Williams hit a two-run shot to right. Lang looks to second with a 1-0. Gillespie ropes it down the right field line. That's fair and in for extra bases. DeAngelis will score. Hubbard being waved around third. The throw to the plate is up the third baseline, and Brent Gillespie has a two-run double. It's 4-1. DeAngelis scores easy from second base. Hubbard scores all the way from first. Gillespie with the double. His second double of the season. And that'll warn a mound visit. Still nobody out here in the fourth. We saw this a couple of nights ago. The Stompers against the Silverados. In the Bottom of the third inning, trailing 7-0, scored seven runs to tie the game and then put up four more in the fourth inning to go ahead. 11-7 against the Silverados, and the offense never looked back from there. So here's Jacob Barfield. Neil Lang a little rattled here in the fourth, and this is the point for Jacob Barfield that you could potentially... Knock him around a little bit. Nobody's up in the Salina bullpen, so you can't knock him out of the game just yet. Jacob Barfield with six home runs. Two-run home run for Miles Williams. Two-run double down the right field line for Brent Gillespie. So he leads from second. Barfield digs in. Lang looks out to second base, his first pitch, and Barfield takes inside for ball one. Stompers offense strikes quickly, and they have here in the fourth. Four men have come up. Five men have come up. Four of them have scored. The fifth, Gillespie, 
Stands out at second base. Here's the 1-0. Barfield takes a big swing and fouls it straight down off of home plate and back to the screen. One and one the count. Barfield, the right-handed hitter, struck out his first time against Lang. The one-one. He squares around, bunts it down the third baseline, over to get it. Lang, he slides the throw to first, not in time. Jacob Barfield with a bunt single of beauty down the third baseline, and the Stompers have him at the corners. Still nobody out. How about that, Jacob Barfield? who has 13 extra base hits this year already, lays down a bunt single and he couldn't have went over and set it in a perfect, more perfect spot. Here's Daniel Molinari. He grounded out to Martini at short the first time and Lang, very frustrated. Still nobody out, Stompers have him at the corners and they lead four to one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Gillespie leads from third, Barfield from first base. Molinari hitting at 357, the backup catcher at 357. Time is called and Molinari steps out. Stomper's the best offensive team in the league, the best pitching team in the league. First pitch from Lang and Molinari rolls it foul up the third baseline. It's nothing in one. The only spot where the Stompers lack now they could get you can always get better at every aspect of the game. But really what has plagued the Stompers this year have been defense. They just cannot play clean baseball. Only 3 times this year have the Stompers had an errorless game. That's out of 27 games so far and tonight will not be errorless. They already have 2. Here's the 0-1 to Molinari, a breaking ball across the letters and a bit high says Reiko Meyer. It's 1 and 1. Gillespie at third does not run all that well, so it'll probably take a base hit or a very deep fly ball to get him home. Barfield over at first. Once he gets going, he could pick up a little bit of speed. There's the 1-1. Molinari fouls it straight back, and the count is 1-2. and two. One ball, two strikes on Molinari, who's 0 for 1 in the game so far. One home run and seven runs batted in on the season. There's the 1 2. Molinari down on strikes, laying through the fastball by him. And so now for Molinari on the season, that was his ninth at bat with men in scoring position, and that's only the third time he's been retired in those situations. So a big out there for Neil Lang against a guy that's been clutch this year. Here's Pedro Barrios. Still first and third with one out now. Barrios hit a grounder to third and was robbed of a hit by Zane Gelfman. The first pitch to him from Lang. He takes high, ball one. One another count, Barrios the right-handed hitting shortstop against the left-handed Neil Lang. Here's the pitch, and a breaking ball drops in for strike one. Stompers four runs here in the fourth. They can really break this thing open, still only one out. Lang trying to get on the same page with Kozak. He looks to first and throws, and Barrios chases an off-speed pitch in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Lang stands at five foot ten, 175 pounds. Pedro Barrios at 5'9", 180 pounds. One and two the count, a long look for Lang this time. Now he's set. He deals on one and two, and Barrios takes a curveball that was very high. It looked like it slipped out of the hand of Lang. Four-one stompers in the fourth. 
Two balls, two strikes, two on, just one out. Middle infield playing for a double play ball. The 2-2. Change up outside and the count is full. Romero is on deck. The count is full on Barrios. Barrios with a, a ton of back control, the Venezuelan. And with Gelfman holding on, Barfield at first base, just a ton of room on the right side of the infield. Here's the payoff. Barfield goes, and it's hit in the air to right. That sends Bird back toward the gap. He's backpedaling near the track, and it's off of his glove. In to score is Brent Gillespie. An error by Bird in right field. He went over towards the gap. Backpedaled toward the wall. He reached up. It didn't look like he was having any trouble with the sun. But it hits off the thumb of his glove. Gillespie scores and it's 5-1. to one. Here's Romero. He's the ninth man to hit here in the fourth inning. The Stompers had put up five runs. Romero popped up on the infield, and Neil Lang took charge to catch the pop-up, falling to his backside. That ended the third inning. Here's the first pitch to Romero, and a curveball drops in for strike one. Nothing in one the count. Barfield's at second. Barney was at first after the air by Bird and Wright. Here's the pitch, and Romero pops it up. Down the right field line in foul territory. The first baseman, Zutenhorst, slips. He makes the catch. But tagging and going to third is Jacob Barfield. So Zutenhorst at first base makes a good catch over the shoulder in foul territory right on the right field line. But Barfield with some heads up base running goes from second to third. And back to the top of the lineup for Nick Gata. Now we said it only takes one hit for the Stompers. After that, the offense is rolling. Gata got that hit to open the inning. And then after that, all five guys got on base to open the inning, and all five have scored. They can make it six with Barfield over at third base. Runners at the corners, two out. Stompers lead 5-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth. The first pitch to Nick Gata. He checks his swing and taps a curveball back to the mound. Lang fields and fires to first, and that ends the inning. The Stompers score five times. A two-run home run for Miles Williams. The two-run double for Brent Gillespie, who then scored on an error. We're through four innings. It's the Stompers five, the Stockade one. 9-1-2 for Salina when we come back. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com.
We're on to the fifth inning, and the Stoppers lead it 5-1. to one. Five runs in the bottom half. A Williams two-run home run, a Gillespie two-run double. And the error in right field by Justin Bird allows another run to come in and score. Sheiks, Bird, Bishop, 9-1-2 against Barneys here in the fifth who pitches with a lead. Now his first pitch to Sheiks, a fastball above the letters for ball one. That pitch number 62 for Nick Barnese. Neil Lang just had 67 even after the long inning. Here's the 1-0 down in the dirt, 2-0. A 28-pitch inning for Barnese, or excuse me, for Lang in the bottom of the fourth. And the pitch count is still okay. It was efficient in the first three. Still nobody up in the bullpen for Salina. Stompers lead it 5-1. to one. The 2-0 is on the outside corner at 91 for Barnese. Two balls and a strike to count. Sheiks bounced back to Barnese the first time who threw him out at first. The 2-1 pitch. Fastball threw it right by him at 93, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Barney's kicks and deals on two and two, and Sheiks hits it on the ground to second. Romero gobbles it up and throws him out at first. One out back to the top of the lineup for Salina and Justin Bird, who went deep his last time. He hit it to left the opposite way. Bird, one for two with that home run. He was caught out on strikes to open the game. Barney's got his first one, two, three inning in the fourth. The first pitch to Bird. High with a fastball, one ball and no strikes. We check on the game over in Napa. The Pacifics lead the Silverado six to two in the bottom of the seventh. The 1-0 from Barnese. Bird squares around and takes high and in for ball two. So between those two teams, San Rafael 18 and 20, 18 and 12, my bad. Three and a half games back. Stompers broke their winning streak last night. And for Napa, they've won two straight with a record of 13 and 15. Here's the 2-0. Bird checks his swing and takes a fastball at 95 for strike one on the outside corner. Nobody on, one out, top five. Barney's on two and one to Bird. Squares around, bunts it over toward the Salina dugout, and it's off the front screen. Everybody looks like they're okay. Barney's really got in there on a fastball to Bird as he squared around. Two and two the count. Barney's looks in. Now starts the motion and throws on two and two. Fastball outside and it's full. Cody Bishop on deck. Hubbard over toward the left center gap. Barnese's payoff pitch. High and tight, the first walk for Barnese tonight. The Stompers, no walks as a pitching staff last night. Just one hit by pitch. That's the second time this year that the Stompers pitching staff has not allowed a walk in a game. Cody Bishop, the hitter with a man at first after the walk and one out. Barney's back out of the stretch. First pitch to Bishop. Hit in the air to center. Hubbard goes back. He back pedals and makes the catch for out number two. Shortstop, Lewis I'm bring up Martini, the shortstop. One of six men that have struck out against Barney's tonight. Hit by a pitch in the first inning. 
Leading from first, Justin Bird. He's the only man to score for the stockade tonight. Barnice's first pitch there goes Bird. It's outside the throw down to second base on one hop is not in time. Nothing and won the count. The pitch from Barney's called a strike on the outside corner. Bird steals second. He's in scoring position. Here's the 0-1. And Fister up the first baseline. Barfield will let it roll foul. Nothing and two the count. And Barney's got in on the hands of Martini there and snapped the bat. So he'll need a new piece of lumber. That gives us a chance to remind you that the Stompers are on the road tomorrow night and Friday night. Both games in Vallejo. Those will be broadcast on the Stompers radio network. You can access that at stompersbaseball.com or at mixlr.com slash Sonoma Stompers. Back home for two this weekend. Saturday at 6.05 and then Sunday. Our first Sunday afternoon game of the year. Barney East wants Molinari to go through the signs one more time. Now he picks one and throws on 0-2. Very high. One ball and two strikes. This Saturday will be Autism Awareness Night. Come out for Autism Awareness Night and support the Stompers as they take on the Salina Stockade. That's this Saturday, July 13th. 6.05 first pitch. Here's the 1-2. Martini hits it on the ground to third. Gotta has it bounce away. Now around third is Bird, and they have him hung up between third and home. Gotta runs over, tags him out. So that takes an error off the board, and Bird is retired on the fielder's on the fielder's choice. Bird rounding third hard. And he's tagged out by Ghana. Five unassisted, one of the weirdest plays you'll ever see. We're halfway home. Miles Williams will lead us off in the bottom of the fifth. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Michael Pope, the new right-hander for Salina in the bottom of the fifth. An 8-3-0 ERA in two appearances for him. Six runs, four earned on six hits and four and a third. Three strikeouts and four walks for the right-hander Michael Pope. He'll face Miles Williams, Rob DeAngelis, Dondre Hubbard. 2-3-4 for the stoppers here in the last of the fifth. 
They knocked Neil Lang out of the game, who threw only 67 pitches and lasted just four innings. Pope's first pitch to Williams is a fastball in the outside corner for strike one. Williams, of course, the two-run shot to open the scoring in the fourth inning for the Stompers. Pope, who works out of the stretch, deals on 0-1 to Williams. He hits a two-hop rocket to Sheiks at second, who backhands and throws him out at first. So Williams has hit the ball hard twice tonight. He grounds out to Sheiks. One out. Here's Rob DeAngelis. Neil Lang, six hits in four innings, all of them coming in the fourth inning. Four earned runs, five runs total, three strikeouts and a walk. So Michael Pope will face Rob DeAngelis, nobody on, one out the first pitch, and DeAngelis fouls it off at the plate. A 28-pitch fourth inning for Neil Lang, and that'll knock you out of the game. The high stress inning for Lang. He only lasts four. Pope on 0-1. DeAngelis tanks on the outside corner. A couple inches off, one ball and one strike. We're in the bottom of the fifth, and the stoppers lead 5-1. Five, five runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Salina got their one run in the top of the third on a Justin Bird solo home run. The 1-1 one, one pitch, and DeAngelis takes outside. Two balls and a strike. DeAngelis at the plate with Hubbard on deck. Williams grounded out to open the inning. The 2-1 pitch. DeAngelis fouls it off at the plate again. Two balls and two strikes to the left fielder. He's one for two, singled and scored in the fourth inning. Two in, two the count. Outfield straight away against Rob. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Pope. DeAngelis down on strikes. He swings and misses at a breaking ball. First two men, Pope faces out of the bullpen. He retires. That brings up Dondre Hubbard, who singled sharply last inning. He's one for two. Hubbard, with his single last inning, has extended his hitting streak to 21 games. Here he is against Pope with nobody on, two out. Pope's first pitch. Hubbard takes outside. So far outside that it goes all the way to the backstop. One ball and no strikes. Hubbard trying to make some noise for himself here in the fifth. The 1-0. Lifted in the air to right, slicing toward foul ground. Zutenhorst over, he's chasing, and it falls for strike one on Dondre Hubbard. Hubbard takes the slow walk back to home plate. Stoppers lead by four. Barney's so far 77 pitches through five innings, and... Arms are not the problem out of the bullpen tonight. At least six available. Connor Lienho may be the only one that we think may not be available tonight. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Hubbard tanks outside. Two balls and a strike. We've seen Hubbard hit some home runs here that may have cleared the vet's home. Pope on two and one. Hubbard hits it in the air. Shallow right center. Bird comes on. Will he catch this one? He will. 
One, two, three inning out of the bullpen for Michael Popeworth through five. It's the Stompers five, the Stockade one. Middle third of the order for Salina when we come back on the Stompers Radio Network and on KSVY. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Jacob Wooler leads us off in the top of the sixth inning. 4-5-6 for Salina against Nick Barnes, who's thrown 77 pitches to this point. Allowed one run on just three hits. He struck out six. His first pitch to Wooler is swung on and missed. Threw him a changeup to start the sixth. Came in at 82. Wooler over the top for strike one. Barnes works quickly the 0-1. Wohler chases a fastball at 92, so we spent him up. Barney's way ahead. Wohler has struck out twice. He reached in the third inning after striking out on the throwing air by Daniel Molinari behind the plate. Barney saw nothing in two. Curveball misses well outside. One ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Wohler chops it on the ground to short. Barrios can't field the tricky hopper. A high hopper to Barrios, and then it just hugged the dirt all the way. Right now, it'll be ruled a base hit for Jacob Wohler. So here comes Zane Gelfman. So here's Zane Gelfman. He's one for two with a single. First pitch from Nick Barnes. He throws him a fastball, and Gelfman shoots it foul off to the right. Nothing in one the count. Wolder's leadoff single. He's over at first. Stompers lead 5-1 here on the top of the sixth. And Nick Barnes with his pitch count. Climbing here in the sixth. Looking for a ground ball off the bat of Gelfman here. He throws on nothing and one. Fastball outside. One and one on Gelfman. Hitting over 300. But it's really just a picture perfect night here tonight. 73 degrees right now. A little bit of wind blowing to center, but not felt in the stands tonight. The one one is shot into right field. That'll be down for a base hit. Wool around second, he'll stop there. Miles Williams gets it into the infield. So back to back singles for Salina opens the sixth. Taylor Zuthorse will come up. He's 0 for 2, bounced into a 6 4 3 double play and was called out on strikes. 
So Molinari will go out and talk to Nick Barnes. Two away games in a row, both in Vallejo. Tomorrow night and Friday night at 6.35. Back at home Saturday at 6.05 for Autism Awareness Night. That'll be against the Salina Stockade once again. And then Sunday, 105 right here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field as we welcome in the Vallejo Admirals. So after tonight, one more game against Salina and then three against Vallejo to end the week. Waller at second, Gelfman at first with Zutenhorst who has a home run with a 267 average. Barnice out of the stretch, his first pitch and Zutenhorst takes high and away. One and another count, two on, nobody out. Gelfman, the left-handed hitter. Barnese at the belt, and he throws. Gelfman takes outside, 2-0. Oh. Barnese falls behind. Pat Barnett, the right-hander, is throwing in the stopper's bullpen. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Zutenhorst chases a fastball, and it's 2-1. Two balls and a strike against Taylor Zutenhorst. Here's the pitch. He pops it up down the left field line. Long run for DeAngelis. It is out of play. <laughs> two and two the count. First and second with nobody out. Barney's looking for a ground ball here in the sixth with his stompers leading five to one. Right hander readies and deals. Down on strikes, he threw the fastball by him and Nick Barney's has his seventh strike out of the ball game. Long way to go here in the sixth though, just one out. And Chuck Rocker coming up. He's 0 for 2. The bottom third of this lineup that is coming up for Salina combined 0 for 6 against Barney's tonight. Third time through the order. His first pitch to Rocker. Fastball, he checks his swing. They appeal. He did not go around. One ball and no strikes to Chuck Rocker. He reached on an air by Barrios, and then Barrios retired him on a ground ball his second time up. Here's the 1-0. High, two balls and no strikes, and Barrios would probably like a ground ball here. Barnitz would love to give him a ground ball here with first and second and just one out. The 2 0 pitch from Nick Barnes is inside to Chuck Rocker, and now he's falling behind 3 0. Barnes does have a base open with Eric Kozak on deck, but nursing just a four run lead. It's 3 0 on the outside corner, 3 and 1. Barney's 3-0 this year, and at this point in line for his fourth win, if he can get out of this sixth inning. His 3-1 pitch. Rocker fouls it straight back, and from 3-0 to 3-2, Nick Barney's a pitch away from retiring Rocker. Seven strikeouts to just one walk for Barney's on the night. He's been around the strike zone, and he's been efficient. Up near 90 pitches now. His payoff pitch to Chuck Rocker. Here it is. Outside ball four. Second walk for Barnice. That loads the bases. 
And it brings up the catcher, Eric Kozak. Kozak also 0 for 2, and here comes pitching coach Mike Nunez. So over in Napa, the Pacifics lead the Silverados 8 to 2 in the top of the ninth inning. So it looks like San Rafael is going to win that one, and if they do, they'll narrow the lead to just three games for the Stompers. Came in with a three and a half game lead. And lead it five to one here in the top of the six. So Nunez comes out. He'll talk to Barnes and Molinari. The rest of the infield in on the conversation, but kind of having a separate one by themselves. Pat Barnett is throwing in the Stomper bullpen. Nobody is up for Salina. Michael Pope came out of the pen and had a one, two, three, fifth inning. And dealt just 11 pitches. Bases are loaded and one out for the catcher, Eric Kozak. He comes in at 167, four home runs, 14 runs batted in. A strikeout and he's grounded to first tonight. So the infielders back to their positions. Molinari back behind the plate. And Barnese back on the hill. Base is loaded, one out, and Kozak the tying run at the plate here in the top of the sixth. Barnese is first pitch. Fastball fouled out of play, and it's 0-1. Seven strikeouts for Barnese, two walks to hit batsman. Stompers on top, 5-1. to one. Wohler leads from third. Gelfman from second. Rocker from first. Barnese throws on nothing in one. Kozak takes a fastball for strike two on the inside corner. Barnese way ahead, 0-2. With Aaron Sheeks on deck. Aaron Sheeks, who is hitless this year. Barnese is 0-2 pitch. High with a fastball, and it's one in, one ball and two strikes. Nowhere to put Kozak. Bases loaded, here's the one, two. Fouled off and out of play. These two teams with almost opposite records, the Stompers at 20 and seven. And the Stockade at eight and 20 coming into tonight. Barnese once again on one and two to Kozak. Curveball rolled on the ground to third. Got a field. He'll go to second. And the throw back to first is in time. 5-4-3 double play ends the inning. Got it hesitated. Went for it anyway. And it pays off. No runs across on two hits for Salina. We're through five and a half. It's the Stompers one, five, the Stockade one. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And Social media support is provided by WordMice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. 
By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Jenko Barfield will lead us off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Barney's got a 5-4-3 double play to end the top half of the inning on his 100th pitch. Barfield thought he was leading it off, but it's actually Brent Gillespie. So it'll be Gillespie, Barfield, Molinari, and we're pleased to be joined by a Stoppers general manager, Brad Kramer, here in the booth in the bottom of the sixth inning, and the Stoppers lead 5-1, a pretty good game so far. The offense once again putting up a lot of runs in just one inning. Absolutely, and uh, thanks for having me on, Forrest. Gillespie, the left-hander against Michael Pope. The first pitch is rolled foul along first for strike one. We had you on a couple of nights ago. It was right after all the aftermath of the big week we had last week with the 4th of July and, and all, all the hoopla going on. And you, you were just recovering, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, had, we asked you a bunch of tough questions. 0-1 to Gillespie's a curveball for strike two. Are we feeling a little better now, getting ready for the upcoming uh, upcoming promotions? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think this Saturday is going to be great with Autism Awareness Night. And on Sunday, I think it's our first Sunday day game in over a month. So, you know, we're looking forward to that to close off the homestand. And I think we have three more games the following week. But, uh, no, I think th I think it hit our whole team by storm, those, those two massive games for a little bit. And it took a little bit for us to recover. But, you know, our team's been still playing quality baseball. And it's been a, a heck of a season thus far. One and two, the count on Gillespie. Here's the pitch from Michael Pope. Chases a fastball upstairs, and Pope has his second strikeout. That brings up Jacob Barfield. So we saw Pat Barnett down in the stomper bullpen, and it would be his first appearance. We haven't seen him this year. He's been on the IL and with Nick Kern going on the IL with a hamstring problem. Barnett has been reinstated. What can you tell us? What can we expect from Pat Barnett in his first outing of the season since we haven't seen him yet? Yeah, absolutely. I know a couple of topics of discussion we've had in the past has been that injury bug. And, you know, Nick, as you're talking about, and also Patrick, they've had a couple of lingering issues. Nick with his hamstring, Patrick with his his shoulder. You know, that's kind of where he's had some issues in the past and even rehabbing it. Uh, in 2017 form after a successful year in Santa Fe in 2016. So, you know, he, he told us he's ready to go and he wants to give everything he's got and we have that faith in him that he's going to deliver for us. Barfield takes an 0-1 curveball inside, 1-1. One one. So he's a guy that you've been watching for a couple of years and you've finally gotten him here. Yeah, you know, I think uh, him and Pace go a little bit back in 2016. He was with Santa Fe and was kind of a workhorse over there and ate up a lot of innings for the Pacifics. And uh, he also pitched phenomenal in the Pecos League before that. I think he had a couple of shutouts to his name as well. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that's been eager to get back on the field, and I know he's been frustrated with some, some injuries as well. And, you know, we're excited to present that opportunity for him once again to be reinstated to the active list. And, you know, I think I, I know he's excited as well. Two and one the count on Jacob Barfield, the pitch from Michael Pope. That smashed into left, but too much topspin for Barfield as Cody Bishop in left has to go down to one knee to catch the sinking liner for the second out. That'll bring up Daniel Molinari. Well, it probably feels good to see Miles Williams go deep for the second night in a row. Not very many extra base hits for him on the season. He, he spoiled Stompers fans last year with how well he hit in 2018, not that he hasn't hit all that well this year, just not up to the standard that we're used to seeing around these parts. 
Yeah, and I think Miles holds himself to a certain standard as well, and he wants more for more production out of himself in general. And uh, you know, he's still done a good job this year. As as the power numbers isn't where he wants them to be, uh, he's still been doing a great job delivering, uh, and, it, and his average is still there. I think it's around you know that 275, 280 mark, and you know it's good to see kind of that that power, that natural strength that we all know that he has, uh, kind of come through uh, this this fifth week of the season. We saw the, the power to go the other way. Three of his home runs have come the other way. Three of his five. The other two pull aside, and the one that he hit last night over the press box here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field just mashed it. Molinari tanks high, it's one and one. He's the guy that could challenge Dondre Hubbard for the league lead at home runs if he starts to get going and really gets that swing here in mid-July. Yeah, and, you know, he's the type of guy when he gets hot and, and, and he's making a hard contact that, like you said, he could be a runner-up. And I think last year, you know, if he if he didn't get called up to the Atlantic <laughs> League, he would have been in contention with uh, Javion Randall for most valuable player. One and one the count on Molinari, who is the backup catcher starting tonight. He's 0 for 2, but hitting over 350 on the year. The 1-1 one -one from Pope, he takes a curveball for strike two. The Stompers, all their hits have come in that fourth inning when they scored five runs all six of them just one base runner other than that Gata who led off the game with a walk yeah and it does seem like the past couple games for us our team has been scoring in bunches I know we played Napa the other night and scored you know 11 runs in two innings and, and zero the other what six so Molinari the soft liner that makes it through the infield Molinari's first hit of the night a two out single and that brings up Pedro Barrios like you were saying, we saw it last night, too. Seven of the Stomper, eight runs, came in three innings. They scored three in back-to-back -back innings. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, that's that's picking up your teammates right there, you know, when things might not be going through the, the first couple innings. I think tonight, they you know, Lang didn't allow but maybe one base runner, and then they got a double play. So the fact that, you know, we're still able to keep our heads up even when trailing and, and be able to put that big inning together and put that dent and that crooked number up in the, in the scorebook, that's, you know, that's what we're looking for. First pitch curveball to Barrios. Almost got him as he has to really duck out of the way and backpedal out of the batter's box. First Sunday day game at home this year coming up. Personally, don't know what to expect a Sunday home game here at Arnold Field. Yeah, it should be a great time at the yard. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many days you've spent in Sonoma on, on, on daytime, but it's going to be it's going to be a little hot. So bring your sunscreen and, and uh, you know, get that ice water ready. Well, thankfully, we get to <laughs> sit up here and cook. <laughs> <laughs> Two and oh, the count on Barrios. The one oh pitch went all the way to the screen, allowing Molinari to go to second. So a good RBI up. Opportunity here. The Stompers two for six with a man in scoring position tonight. That's all two for six. The two run double by Gillespie and a single by Barfield. The two hits. There's the 2 0. -oh. Barrios chops it softly over the mound, charging Martini from short. He'll field and he will not throw to first. Fakes the throw, looks back to third. Molinari stays on the bag. And for a guy that's been having some tough luck at the plate, it's nice to see one of those swell rollers finally go in his favor there. And, you know, even in tonight's game, he hits two balls very well, and Gelfman makes a heck of a play on one of them, and you know, he drives the other ball 375 to right center field. And, uh, you know, that one did drop, I guess, but it's still an error. But, uh, you know, he's been hitting the ball hard lately, and uh, it's good to see one go his way. Racing Romero coming up. 0 for 2. A couple of pop-ups for Romero after he hit the ball really well last night. A ringing double down the left field line to bring in the eighth and final stomper run of the game. He takes strike one from Pope here. Romero's 105 average and with something like a dozen runs scored this year. He's just finding ways to get on base. Runners at the corners here with two out. Pope so one. Romero takes high, one yeah. ball and one strike. And Romero's going to be a guy that grinds out at bats. That's what he's done the last year and a half. And you know, last last night we were able to see that. Like you said, he hit a couple balls hard, hit a big double the other night as well. And uh, you know, he finds ways to get on base. One and one the count to Romero. 
Molinari at third, Barrios at first, and the pitch goes all the way to the backstop, and time is called. A balk is called, so the run does score. Barrios goes to second, and it's six to one. No pitch, count still one and one on Romero. Michael Pope balked. Brings in a run. Two out, Barrios now at second base in a one one count to Romero. We don't see that very often. Yeah, I believe he didn't come set on that. Was that what the ruling yeah, was? I think so, so. Uh, didn't come set and awarded a free base. The one one to Romero is called a strike on the corner. You know, Barnice is a guy. If I had to pick one guy, Marshall Schill is a rhythm guy, too, on the mound. And when he gets men on base, he really has to emphasize that pause. But Barnes is a guy, just in my perspective, watching from up here, who really takes it to a minimum <laughs> coming set <laughs> on the mound. <laughs> yeah, and Barnes is a, you know, he likes to work pretty fast when he's out there. You know, when he's not in the stretch, he's got that big over-the-top wind up with the high leg kick. And then when he's in the stretch, you know, he just has that that the ball behind his, behind his back, and he comes set, and he's ready to go. Like you said, he is pretty quick with that delivery, though. The 2-2 two -two to Romero from Pope, who looks to second. Now delivers. Romero takes high, and the count is full. And, you know, I was talking about grinding out of bats and his approach earlier in this at bat, and here we are once again, you know, six pitch of the bat here, and uh, let's see what happens. Barrios at second, he can run. If the ball gets through the infield here, he could have a throw and a play at the plate. The payoff pitch to Racing Romero is on the ground to third. Gelfman to one knee, he'll field the throw to first. His high Zutenhorst comes off the bag and gets the foot back down. And that ends the inning. Stompers get a run on the buck and we're through six. It's the Stompers six. And the stockade won. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Aaron Sheeks will lead things off here in the top of the seventh inning. The Stompers lead 7-1. New pitcher, Pat Barnett, 
The 6'6 right-hander from Windsor, Connecticut delivers a first pitch and Sheeks rolls it foul. Down the third baseline, it's 0-1. Last night's game, the Stoppers beat the Pacifics 8-4. And Joseph Broderick pitched really well last night. Four runs on nine hits, just seven innings. He struck out seven as Barnese works from the stretch in his 0-1 curveball is outside 1-1. One one. Of course, Broderick, the first start of the year after Henry Omania gets the call to go down to, to Mexico in the Mexican Professional Baseball League. And uh, you were a big part of getting him there, Brett, as Sheiks chases a 1-1 fastball for strike two. Well, I wouldn't say I was. I would say his pitching on the field was. But uh, he did have some history in that in that league, and it's good to see him go to Bravos de Leon and, uh, you know, get signed. And, and, and like like we were talking about in the office earlier, you know, that's equivalent to AAA play. And, you know, about half the rosters are former major league players. One-two curveball to Barrios at short, who this time is able to field a tricky hop and throw Sheiks out for out number one. And you know they got MLB veterans like Felix Pa and and all, all an array of ML, former MLB players. So it's good for him. And you know he's still young enough. Or if he impresses and, and pitches very well there, that he get that opportunity to get back, uh, get signed into affiliated baseball. Yeah, you said something earlier to me. Something like 17 guys on the roster down there, approximately on each team are some form of guys that were in the MLB or played in high levels of affiliate baseball? Absolutely, and uh, you know I, I have the most confidence in Henry where he's gonna be able to deliver at that level, and you know he has a lot of positive momentum rolling through from you know the beginning of the season with Sonoma as well. Omanu, the right-hander from Walnut, California, three and one with a 1-3-3 ERA, and in 27 innings struck out 36, and the 1-0 pitch to Bird is on the inside corner, 1-1. One and, one. and there was an interesting story about getting Omanya here, given that when you looked at his numbers, because he was in the Mexi Mexican League prior to being here, and his numbers weren't really all that impressive. Yeah, and, you know, that's kind of where that background check comes in and doing your due diligence on a player and, and the references as well. And, uh, you know, he pitched at Cal State Fullerton, which is amongst one of the, you know, the best programs in college baseball, arguably. And, you uh, you know, then he went to Cal Poly Pomona and put up great numbers there as a, as a, as I believe a graduate transfer, and uh, you know tried pitching in Evansville and was released this spring training. We have a good re relationship with Evansville as well, and uh, you know he he gave us a high recommendation when we inquired about Henry as well. Check swing on a one-two pitch to Justin Bird and Molinari threw it down to third. They thought that he went around. They appealed and he did not. So Molinari, who turns around and apologizes to Gary Reinkelmeyer after throwing that pitch down. After what he thought was strike three, so the count is two and two, and Pat Barnett has faced one batter so far. He got Eric Aaron Sheeks to bounce to short, and now he strikes out Justin Bird with a curveball. So far tonight, after spending some time on the IL, Pat Barnett looks pretty good. And he's only faced two batters, so a really small sample size, but... That's all right, you couldn't be doing any better, right? Two up, two down. <laughs> as far as uh, the stuff goes, fastball 89, the curveball there looked pretty sharp. Willie Ethington was up in the bullpen, tossing lightly. Now nobody is up, the first pitch to Cody Bishop is on the inside corner at 93. This is also something that you and I talked about earlier is the velocity out of the bullpen. Yeah, and, you know, Pat's actually one of those guys that isn't going to necessarily rear back and give you 100%. He's going to use a little bit more finesse in his pitches, and that's kind of what he's been known for. Miles Williams ends the inning running down a fly ball in right. Yeah, that's kind of what Patrick's been known for, and, you know, it's nice to see him after a month plus on an active list to come in here and do his job. We go to the last of the seventh stretch time here at Palooza Park in Sonoma. Top of the lineup, Nick Gatta will lead things off. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word mice. 
Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Bottom of the seventh, Stompers lead six to one. Top of the lineup, Gata Williams DeAngelis. They'll face new right hander Ricky Bielski, the 6'3 right hander from Anaheim. This will be the 11th game in which he's appeared, a 10 and a half ERA. 15 runs, 14 earned on 14 hits in 12 innings for the right hander. And the ERA is up there for Bielski. But against the Stompers this year, he's actually thrown pretty well. Yeah, you know, looking at his past track record, he's a guy that's been out of the game for a little bit. So I think he, uh, as the cliche saying goes, he's working the rust off. And uh, I think we're seeing that here. He's got good stuff. And I think when you watch him live and you look at his velocity and you look at his movement, he's got good stuff. And you can see, you know, why he was a, a, a draft pick and then rookie and, and in short season A ball as well. His first pitch to Nick Gata is strike one. He was drafted by the... Phillies in the 14th round in 2012 out of Servite High School in Anaheim. Like you said, rookie ball in low A, 2012 to 2014, and his curveball moves a lot there to Gata, but too much inside one and one. Top of the lineup, Gata, Williams, DeAngelis, Bielski out of the windup, the 1 1 pitch is off the inside corner, 2 and 1. And, you know, and being able to watch some of these home games at, uh, for the Stompers and, you know, looking at Nick Gata's approach and, and just his plate discipline, it'd be harder to find anyone else in the Pacific Association with better plate discipline than, than Gata, you know. And uh, it's just been phenomenal what he's been able to do the first month and a quarter of the season. 36 walks on the season for Gata. The 2-2 two -two is way outside, and the count is full a... 540 on base percentage for him. And it's not in, not that he's being picky at the plate and just looking for one pitch to hit. He is that guy that you said that will just grind out in a bat similar to Raisin Romero. The average is up over 300 at 326, but he, he knows he'll take a pitch half a ball length off the outside corner as he lines a single to center. And he can still do that too, you know, and you know, talking about, I guess, a, a fun way to put it would put his eagle eye vision, right? Yeah. You know. Just his, uh, his vision at the plate and his plate discipline is phenomenal. And, you know, he still is a threat at the plate, too, where if it's too close, he can still, you know, hit the ball the other way or right up the middle like he's done a couple times tonight. And he's knocked in 13, a 318 hitter with runners in scoring position, and that's his eighth multi-hit game of the year now. He has two singles. And here comes Miles Williams. Got at first. He's a guy that can run, too. The first pitch to Williams. Breaking ball in the outside corner for strike one. Zach Pace does not like to run. Stompers <laughs> with the least amount of stolen bases in the league, which is interesting because on almost every car ride for the away games, Pace reminds us that 
his managing style is almost the complete opposite of the playing style that he had back in the day as Williams hits a sky high pop up out towards short. Martini under it and he makes the catch one out. Yeah, it's funny to hear you, you say that as well. And, uh, you know, looking at, at his track record too, what do he steal? You know, over three, 400 bags in his 800 games played as a professional. So it's, uh, it's funny to hear that. <laughs> it is because he said he was a small ball guy, of course. We, like you, you were the one that told me to look at his walk to strikeout ratio. Right. Yeah. And just how much he got on base. You know, bunt guys over, steals second to get into scoring position, and he does not like to send runners. Well, I, I think there's a, sorry to cut you off. I think no, there's no. a a fine line has got to steal second base here. Funny how right, that works. Right, right on cue. Uh, there's a fine line in stealing bases in, in baseball, right? Uh, guys definitely want to try and get their numbers or get their team back in a ball game. But at the same time, you don't want to run your team out of an inning, right? And I think pace has a very good feel, and that's rare in the game of baseball to, to have that that insight. And, and him being a player where he's, you know, attempted probably over 14, 1,500 stolen bases in his career, he knows when a good time to run is and, and when isn't. So that's that feel that we're talking about. DeAngelis lines a shot into the glove of Zutenhorst at first. Hard to find a ball hit harder than that tonight. And Zutenhorst made a terrific play. Yeah, and that's a ball if it gets down the line, too. It would have rolled all the way into that right corner into foul ball territory near the tarp. And DeAngelis would have been running wild. With his speed, it would have been interesting to see if he could have turned that into three, but all for not. <laughs> Hubbard comes up with Gata at second base. Two out. Stompers lead 6-1 in the seventh. And DeAngelis can run it. He's nursing a little bit of a knee thing, I think, right now, but hard to tell if he would have gone for three or not with two outs. First pitch from Bielski to Hubbard. Flips in a breaking ball, and it's high for ball one. Willie Ethington throwing for the stompers in the bullpen, getting ready for the eighth, potentially. I think Barnett just goes one inning tonight in his first time back. I think so. You know, he, he had been out for about three, four weeks like we talked about, and then he threw live action two or three times on off days and, and before games as well and kind of threw that live simulation. Uh, so I would think, you know, easing him back would be the way to go. And, you know, he had that nice one, two, three inning. Even with a minimal pitch count, it's just nice to, you know, put in our, our eighth inning guy after that. Hubbard chases below the zone on 2-0. and oh. He's a really interesting guy to watch at the plate and all these guys still developing, of course, to trying to get the higher levels. But the guy hits the ball 457 feet and then he chases a 2-0 breaking ball in the dirt. It kind of makes you wonder. Yeah. You <laughs> Not know. to bag on him at all. <laughs> he's definitely, an, ag he's definitely an, ag an aggressive hitter and you know he's looking to hit and get on base and, and contribute. The 2-1, he ropes a line drive into center field. That's down for a hit. Got a waved around third. Rockers throw offline. Cut off by Zutenhorst. Nobody at first. He'll just run Hubbard back, and he has an RBI single. And the stoppers lead 7-1. to one. Just like that, he makes, makes us eat our words, staying inside <laughs> of a baseball and lining it to center. Yeah, and that's part of that uh, you know aggressive hitting style that we're talking about right there. Doesn't try and do too much with it. Second time he's gone to center field this game, and you know another clutch two out RBI base hit. And you know for us, he's been that guy all season. Here's Brent Gillespie, one for three with a two run double. He struck out the other two times. Hubbard at first with two out and a seven one stomper lead in the bottom of the seventh. There goes Hubbard. And Gillespie fouls the first pitch off. Two stolen base attempts in the same inning. They must have heard you in the press box. <laughs> Zach Pace probably has a bug up here, and he said, I'll show <laughs> those guys. <laughs> I don't think they've attempted two stolen bases in a game over the last week. <laughs> Hubbard's at first in a nothing in one count. To Gillespie, he has some pop. The 0-1. Change of blowing away a ball and a strike. I don't think we've seen Gillespie really unleash his full power here yet this year. He does have th three home runs. 
Yeah, I think all of his home runs, besides maybe one, have come on the road, and I haven't actually seen any of them. I, I remember a few from last year when he was on the opposing team, though, so I, I know it's hidden in that bat somewhere. <laughs> it's in there. He's just got to find it. Hubbard's going to go. No, he doesn't. Gillespie pops it up. Left side foul territory. Long run. Gelfman over toward the sidewall. And it's out of play. There are goalposts here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field, and he almost sliced one in from here. Yeah, that would have been a little rugby-style approach, wouldn't it? I've seen a one ball hit through the uprights in right center field during a game. Only one. During a game, that is. It, it was last year, I think. I think Miles Williams did it. Yeah, there's been, you know, since my two years here, there's been a couple balls. Miles, he one-hopped the fence in, in straight center field, which is 435, so that's grown man strength right there. But, you know, talking about guys that – have been able to contribute right away, you know, obviously Broderick last night, but Gillespie too, just, you know, just over two weeks ago, you know, hitting over 300, three, three homers, and he's just kind of taking over that DH position for us, and we also know what he's capable of doing defensively at first and, you know, potentially at third base as well. There goes Hubbard, the 1-2 pitch to Gillespie. He's pulled on the ground to first, and Zutenhorst somehow brings it in. Steps on the bag, that ends the inning. The Stompers get a run on the Dondre Hubbard RBI single. We go to the top of the eighth. The stoppers lead it seven to one. Three, four, five spots coming up for Salina. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Willie Ethington out of the bullpen for the Stompers, a 6-3 right-hander from Mesa, Arizona. This year for Willie, a 4.15 ERA. He's 1-0 in 13 innings, seven strikeouts, three walks, six runs on 16 hits. So Ethington, who came in, his last appearance patched up a few innings in San Rafael. Hasn't pitched since that loss at Albert Park, but back on the hill tonight. And this bullpen slowly being pieced together here in July. And it seems now that starters only need to go five or six innings to really take the lead. And then the bullpen can just handle it from there. Yeah. And, you know, I think they've done a great job as we talk about alleviating some of that pressure from our starters, even though our starters, you know, as you mentioned, had a sub three ERA in that first month of June. And, uh, you know, this is the first week where we'll really be tested playing six straight games. So that's, you know, another reason why we put seven guys in the bullpen this week. Martini leads off the inning. It's a high pop-up down the left field line and out of play. So Barnett goes an inning, gets a strikeout, throws just 11 pitches. But as you alluded to, no reason to make him go anymore with a bunch of arms ready and rearing out of the bullpen. 
still have Schill, lead home, Gibbons, Richardson, and Larita, though we were speculating that lead home probably won't pitch tonight after throwing an inning in last night's game. Yeah, I would think the next in line would be, you know, m m depending on how this inning goes, Willie might get two, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Schill take the ninth. The 0 1 pitch is inside to Martini. It's 1 and 1. He is 0 for 2, hit by a pitch back in the first inning. Against and he, Nick Barnes. We also have a couple guys too in the bullpen that are converted starters as well. Pat Barnett, obviously, and you know Ethan Gibbons, who was our, our our workhorse last year with over 90 plus innings pitch. So we definitely have some guys too. If you know starters aren't able to go over that five inning mark, which obviously you'd like, or you know six innings, we have a couple guys that can eat up some innings and be some bullpen eaters for us. Barnett and then Gibbons, like you said, those guys can throw 100 pitches, being starters previously. Absolutely. Maybe not Barnett quite yet. Like we said, we're kind of working him back and working out the kinks and the rest. But, you know, he's definitely one of those guys, you know, towards the end of the season that could. And he might even be one of those guys later down the road that would get a spot start. Sure. One and two, the count on Lewis Martini. Three, four, five here in the eight. Ethington's one, two. Oh, that got Martini on the hand, and you could hear it all the way up here. Oh. Second time he's been hitting the game tonight, and that wasn't a cheap one. Yeah, you never want to see that. It looked like they tried to go up and in and uh, lost control of it and hit them right in that, that soft spot, too. Mm. It's never good when you can hear it all the way up here. You can hear him yelp, too. Absolutely not. And, you know, Martini's a gamer, man. I, you know, he's impressed me since day one of the season, and he's made phenomenal plays in the field and his bat as well, and you, know, you never want to see a guy go down. He'll try it over to first base. That'll bring up Jacob Wooler. Wooler is one for three with a single. So a leadoff base runner in the eighth against Willie Ethington. You know, and you never want to get hit, but if you do get hit in that area, you'd rather, you know, potentially get hit in that hand rather than in that wrist because hit, when hitters get hit in the wrist, that's that's never a good story. We've seen it so many times. You get that right on the bone on the outside of your wrist. All of a sudden you crack, you know, crack that bone, and then you're out three, four months, which is the whole season here in the Pacific Association. Those take a while to recover. Martini's at first after the hit by pitch. Ethington on Owen, one to Jacob Wooler. He's inside, one ball and one strike. Yeah, and he seems pretty unfazed by it too. You know, he just looked at his hand, he said, hey, I'm good, you know, I'm ready to go. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to steal here either. <laughs> if it's not bleeding or crooked, I guess you're all right as the one one misses outside. If everything's in the right spot, when you look at it, I, I guess you can just trot down there and not worry about it. Yeah, and, you know, I played a couple of years of football myself, and sometimes you go down awkward or you're part of an awkward tackle, and you do some assessment and some inventory, and then you're good, you're good to go. A 2-1 pitch outside. Three balls and a strike. So Ethington, the only guy that has struggled finding the zone here tonight, and Barnes. Walked two guys, the Stompers last night. No walks as a staff for the second time this year. And the 3-1 to Wooler is outside. And a walk puts runners at first and second. And no, I haven't done the research, but I think it's safe to say that I don't think any other staff in the league this year has done that. Not allowed to walk in two games. Yeah, you know, last night it was, it was phenomenal and that you couldn't argue. I think we had, you know, one hit by pitch and that was pretty much it. And, uh, you know, tonight with only being three walks, so what is that? You know, last 17 innings, three walks, and I'm sure we have over a dozen to 15 strikeouts with to go along with that. So, you know, no complaints from me. And, you know, I know our pitching coach, Mike Nunez, is thrilled with that performance all across the board. Gelfman pop, pops the first pitch out of play. It's 0-1. Hit by pitch and a walk puts first and second. Or Salina with nobody out in the top of the eighth. Stompers lead 7-1. to one. So we mentioned Henry Omanya last night, and we said that Joseph Broderick got the start, but we really didn't get into the story about how we got here. Yeah, you know, we I think I learned uh, in the afternoon on Monday that Henry got promoted, and we were thrilled for him, and he was already in L.A. pretty much and on his way to L.A. and uh, was then going to head off to Mexico. So, you know, I was... Stuck with a spot with, you know, 17, 18 hours with trying to find a, 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 a guy. And, 
You know, we, we had a couple guys on our board who we thought could really contribute and Joe is that guy for us on Tuesday and uh, he pitched phenomenal and I think like you said, you know, seven innings, four runs, seven Ks, no walks and and, that, and that's what you want out of your guy on short term notice and for him to come up here we, was was thrilled. You know, he was a guy from last year who pitched really well for us and contributed right away as well. And the numbers were really good down with the Monterey Amber Jacks as well. Down there for Broderick. <laughs> In 41 innings, 45 strikeouts, and only 14 earned runs. Yeah, and I think we caught him just in time, too. I know they were playing a – I called him. He was on the phone, and they had just finished a doubleheader, and he was on his fourth day rest. So he was he was probably ready to go that next day or two. Gelfman hits a 1-2 pitch into the air toward right center. Hubbard will call for it and make the catch. Martini bluffs the tag at second. So one out first and second for Taylor Zutenhorst. Was he maybe the one of the top guys on the list knowing that he had been here before and he had contributed and really pitched well last year? Absolutely, and I think you remember him last year, the last time he suited up for us, he threw a complete game shutout, so that's always hard to forget yeah. as well. And I remember. You know, I think he had 12 Ks in that game, and you know, he, he was a guy last year who contributed out of the bullpen and then had a couple spot starts as well. 11 Ks in that game, only five hits. That was August 31st of last year. Zutenhorst takes inside 1-0. and That was well toward the end of the season. I mean, August 31st, that was right before playoffs. So he was a part of this team down the stretch. Absolutely. That's actually my birthday. So it was a, it was a, it? It was a fun day at the ballpark. <laughs> yep. 1-0 and on Zutenhorst. Ethington deals outside. The velocity's there for Ethington. Just little trouble finding the zone tonight. Yeah, and like you said, his, his last appearance was when we really extended him out. I think he had three and two-thirds innings pitched, or two and two-thirds, somewhere along those lines. That was the first time he's really thrown over two innings. So, uh, you know, now with the extended rest, he's trying to get back into game mode and lock in, and it looks like he's trying to figure figure it out right now. He's low 90s at 92. Two and one the count, first and second one out. I was talking to Marshall Shield today in the office and about our bullpen in particular and the guys that we have coming out of the bullpen, the velocity that we have coming out of the bullpen, and Ethington drops in a curveball for strike two on the outside corner there. Great pitch. And Shill and I agreed that maybe nobody has the velo that we have coming out, but we have a bunch of different kind of guys too. The 2-2 two -two is foul trade back, and what I mean by that, you have Ethington, Fastball, curveball kind of guy, a little bit more overhand. Schill, of course, the sidewinder. Richardson, who is more over the top, but has the changeup that's his go-to pitch. Lareed is the lefty, and Leadholm just comes at you. Everything's hard. Yeah. Gibby's a four-pitch guy out of the bullpen. N not one is alike. Yeah, yeah. You, you bring up a great point there, and I think um, – our bullpen, like you said earlier in the broadcast, is kind of hitting its stride right now. I think anybody can put a bullpen in place, but to find a bullpen that's going to contribute and fill up the zone right away, I think we're doing a good job. And, you know, our bullpen deserves all the credit right there. And I think the only other team in the league right now uh, with that would be Vallejo, you mm -hmm. know, with that uh, Leach, her, and then also Eric lineup and uh, her getting promoted to the Lincoln Salt Dogs. And that's part of the battle of independent league baseball is once you get plucked, a guy gets plucked from your team to try and replace him. Uh, that's definitely a challenge. And, you know, we try and uh, take that on a day-to-day -day basis. Once a guy gets called up, what's going to be the process of getting that next piece in there? And you don't want to just get any piece. You want to get that, that right piece that fits the puzzle. And I think we've been a, doing a great job, Zach Pace and, and pitching coach Mike Nunes, of doing that this year. Zutenhorst strikes out on a fastball above the strike zone. The count is one and one on Chuck Rocker. Zutenhorst has struck out three times tonight. Rocker, who has reached twice, once on an air, once on a walk. Here's the one one. Inside, two and one. Yeah, that's a good spot to miss. You know, he's been working, you know, all three areas of the plate tonight, and it's taken him a little bit to find the zone. But as he's retired his last two batters, it looks like he's been able to calm down a little bit. And that's a, that's a good pitch right there. Rocker, the player manager on two and one against Ethington. A fastball dots the outside corner, but about a ball length off for ball three. Spotting both sides of the plate just a couple of inches off here in this at bat. Maybe. Yeah, it's a good you know, spot though. Yeah, those are good spots to 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 miss, you know. 
Ethington at the chest. He looks to second and throws on three and one. And Rocker hits a chopper to short. Barrios is there. He flipped to second, and that ends the inning. Stompers lead it seven to one, and a pretty good time for you up here in the booth as the Stompers played pretty well, and you're hitting in a half. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, and uh, go Stompers. 7 1, we go to the bottom of the eighth. Jacob Barfield will lead things off. We would like to thank our community partners Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Bottom of the eighth inning, Stompers coming up. Barfield, Molinari, Barrios against new pitcher. Right-hander, Zach Williams at 6'3", 230 pounds from Placentia, California. For the right-hander this year, a 1-4-2 ERA in six and a third innings. One run, two earned on four hits. He has six strikeouts and eight walks. He'll face the six, seven, eight hitters for the Stompers who have put up five in the fourth, one in the sixth, one in the seventh, so two innings in a row. The Stomper offense has put one on the board. Just one run for Salina. That was back in the third inning, a Justin Bird home run to left. So here's Barfield. He'll stand in. One for three tonight with a single. Williams works out of the stretch and his first pitch is high and tight to Barfield for ball one. Ethan Gibbons up in the stomper bullpen. He'll likely come in for the ninth. One another count on Barfield. The pitch from Williams. High and tight once again, 2-0. It was Barnese for six, Barnett for one, Ethington for one, and probably Gibbons in the ninth. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Jacob Barfield. Big swing. He was sitting on a fastball and got it, but a little bit up above the strike zone. A huge hack from Barfield. That may be the biggest swing we've seen out of him this year, and that's, a, that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. Jacob Barfield gets his money's worth at the plate. Here's the 2-1 from Williams. Off speed in the dirt, three balls and a strike. Barfield, six home runs this year, 18 driven in. The 250 average, and the Stompers lead by six in the eighth. Yeah, it is. 
Three and one to count. Nobody on, nobody out. Leading off the home half of the eighth inning. Zach Williams on. Here's the pitch. Barfield opens the inning with a walk. Only the second time that the Stompers have walked tonight, so it's been a pretty well-pitched game for both sides. Only two walks for Salina, three walks for the Stompers. Here's Daniel Molinari. He singled his last time. Molinari one for three tonight. Barfield's at first, being held on by Zutenhorst. Williams with the man at first base, the first pinch to Molinari. He hits it on the ground to second. Sheiks will field, he'll go to second for one. Martini to first, a double play. Lead off walk, wiped off the board. The twin killing 4-6-3. Here's Pedro Barrios. He's one for two with a single and a sack fly. Seven one in the eighth. Williams first pitch to Barrios. Fouled straight back off of Eric Kozak. He's checked on by Gary Reichel Meyer. The count is nothing in one. Stompers are on the road tomorrow and Friday, 635. First pitch in Vallejo on the Stompers Radio Network. Then back home this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Here's the 0-1. Barrios takes a curveball outside, 1-1. One and one. Saturday's first pitch at 6.05, Autism Awareness Night against the Salina Stockade. Sunday, 1.05 against the Vallejo Admirals. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Barrios fooled on a curveball, and it's 1-2. and two. Ten hits already for the Stompers in the game. Six of them came in the fourth inning. Here's the one, two to Barrios. That is outside. Two balls and two strikes, two out, nobody on. Williams trying to get us to the ninth in a six run game. Zach Williams at 6 3 downhill on two and two, and Barrios works the count full. Race and Romero on deck. Barfield walked to open the inning, and then Molinari bounced into a 4-6-3 double play. Three and two to Barrios. There's the payoff pitch from Zach Williams. Shot down the right field line. Foul. Seventh pitch of the at-bat to Pedro Barrios coming up. Still not all the way dark here in Sonoma, and we're in the bottom of the eighth. Long look for Williams. Now the payoff. Barrios fouls it off at the plate. Pedro Barrios... We'll see the eighth pitch of the at bat coming up from Zach Williams. Longest at bat of any stomper this year, a Brett Gillespie walk on 11 pitches. Williams gets a new baseball, walks out behind the mound. Stompers trying to win their third straight. Now Gary Reichel Meyer will wipe off home plate. Still three and two on Barrios. The three two from Zach Williams. 
Barrios hits it on a line right to Sheiks at second. That ends the inning of one, two, three, eighth for Zach Williams. We go to the ninth. Ethan Gibbons will come on. He'll face the eight, nine, one spots. Stoppers lead seven to one. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports-specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State-of-the-art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community-oriented and family-owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com. Eric Kozak leads things off for Salina against Ethan Gibbons, the 5'10 right-hander from Sassoon City, California. Gibbons this year 1-2 with a 10-8-9 ERA. 19 innings, 25 strikeouts, 11 walks. He's allowed 23 runs on 33 hits. So Gibbons, who has found a home in the bullpen, will face the 8-9-1 hitters in his first pitch to Kozak. Misses, one ball and no strikes. Kozak tonight is 0 for 3. The 1-0, Kozak takes a cut and misses. 1-1 one one the count. So it's Kozak and then Sheiks and then back to the top of the lineup, Justin Bird. There's the 1-1. One one. High. 2-1. Kozak has struck out, grounded to first, and bounced into a 5-4-3 double play. He's late on the Gibbons fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Stompers pitching staff tonight, nine strikeouts and two walks. Here's the 2-2 from Gibbons. Swung on and missed strike three. Gibbons opens his night with a strikeout. One gone for Aaron Sheeks. Ethington, Barnett, and Gibbons. Now used out of the bullpen by Zach Pace tonight. Barnes went six innings. He's in line for the win, just allowing the one run on five hits as the fastball from Ethan Gibbons is outside for ball one. The 1-0 pitch, outside, 2-0. Nobody on, one out. We're in the ninth, 7-1, stoppers lead it. Gibbons, 2-0 pitch to Sheiks. Bounce straight back. 
Sheeks, who has grounded out three times, once back to the hill, once to second, and once to short. Two and one. Gibbons works from the stretch position, and he deals. She chases the fastball on the outer half, two and two. Already one strikeout for Gibby tonight. Justin Burr, the leadoff man, is on deck. He's the only man to drive in a run tonight. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit it in the air to center. Hubbard going back. He's on the move. He starts to backpedal, and he makes the catch. So line it down to their final out. Stompers trying to win their third straight, and Ethan Gibbons trying to make it happen. Top of the lineup for Justin Birdie at a solo home run in the third, and that has been all the offense for Salina tonight. Just five hits in the ball game. Bird, the left-handed hitter against Gibbons, the righty. Here's his first pitch. Fastball is outside for ball one, so... All three men that Gibbons has faced here in the ninth, he has started with ball one. He delivers on one and oh. Bird takes away inside, two and oh. Just now starting to get dark here in Sonoma. The lights have been on since about the fifth inning. The 2-0. 3-0. Gibbons on 3-0 to Justin Bird with two out. Right on the outside corner, 3-1. Three balls and a strike to Bird. He struck out twice tonight, walked once, and has the solo home run to left. The 3-1 pitch. Ball four low and away. A walk extends the inning for Cody Bishop. One for four is Bishop tonight with a single in the third. First pitch to him from Ethan Gibbons is inside with a fastball for ball one. 7-1 stompers. Gibbons trying to end the ball game on a 1-0 pitch to Bishop. The runner goes. It's taken low. Bishop goes up to second. No stolen base. Two balls and no strikes with a man in scoring position for Bishop here against Ethan Gibbons. Here's the pitch. High pop-up. Barfield lost it in the lights. He doesn't see it at all. But it's no matter because it's on to play. Once the ball goes above the lights, good luck. Right away off the bat, Barfield moved over into foul territory and then put the hands up as if to say, I don't see it, and then kind of went to start protecting himself in case it came down right on top of him. But it was about 25 feet foul. Out of play, that is. Two and one to Bishop. The pitch from Gibbons on the ground to first. Barfield can see that one. He'll make the play and sprint over to first. And the game is over. Ethan Gibbons closes the door in the ninth. And that does it. The Stoppers win the ball game seven to one. Here's the final line score. First for the Stompers, seven runs on 10 hits, two errors, they leave four. And for Salina, one run, five hits, one error, they leave 10. The win goes to Nick Barney. he's now 
The loss goes to Neil Lang. He is one and two. No save tonight. Ethan Gibbons, Willie Ethington, and Pat Barnett combined for three shutout innings to end the ball game. The Stompers improved to 21 and seven on the year and stay three and a half games ahead of San Rafael for first place. The Stout Gate are now eight and 21, and they are 13 and a half games back. The Stompers are 14 and three here in this ballpark, and they have won three straight. Final time of tonight's ball game, two hours and 47 minutes. That is two nights in a row that the Stompers have finished in less than three hours. So we'll go on the road for two in Vallejo tomorrow night and Friday night, 635 first pitch on the Stompers radio network. That'll be at stompersbaseball.com or on mixlr.com slash Sonoma Stompers. The Stompers win tonight 7-1. to one. We'll see you tomorrow night 6.35. Have a very pleasant good rest of your night. So long. We'll see you tomorrow. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And Social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Sonoma Fit, a state-of-the-art gym located in the Old Bowl Center at 19310 Sonoma Highway. There's no better place with more options to get fit and stay fit. Sonoma Fit offers more than 70 classes a week, including indoor cycling, yoga, TRX, rowing, and strength conditioning. Classes cater to all skill levels from beginners to advanced athletes. And if group classes aren't your thing, Sonoma Fit also offers personal training, small group training, and even sports specific training. Sonoma Fit is proud to be the official workout facility for the Sonoma Stompers. State of the art equipment, experienced trainers, attentive staff, friendly and helpful members, community oriented and family owned. Sonoma Fit is a different gym experience and has locations in Sonoma, Petaluma, and is coming soon to Novato. More information can be found at sonomafitness.com.